At the same time that Tabs has this sort of outward appearance of respectability, and by outward I mean when it comes to sort of mainstream society, right? Tabs is able to get good jobs working for middle class and wealthy white employers. She has no prior criminal record. Um, so all indications are she knows how to carry herself in the white world. But inside sort of the black community, she has this reputation for being sort of a neighborhood terror, right? In addition to kind of having this adulterous affair with this young man, um, seemingly with her husband's complicity, she also was particularly violent in her home and in her community. That violence serves as sort of a window into sort of this past and present for this moment. On one hand, the country's coming off one of, you know, a bloody civil war, right, where you have thousands and thousands of dead, many, many more maimed, injured, and traumatized, right? And for women, that trauma, particularly sort of rape and sexual assault, the kinds of injuries that aren't easily calculated, right? But it's not necessarily a kind of trauma that leaves people. We also have a country coming off the violence of enslavement itself. So I think in some respects that her violence sort of operates as a window onto some of that violent history in America that crosses race, black and white. But also, too, it demonstrates the vulnerability of black women also, right? The ongoing threat for sexual assault. There's, a pra there's something pragmatic about being in an urban community with a reputation for being a tough customer, right? This gives you a lot of room so that people know not to mess with Hannah Mary Tabs, right? She's crazy, right? She will kill you, leave her alone. So there's a way in which it has preemptive elements also. And I think that that speaks to the kind of complexities about violence in urban black communities also, right? That she has this reputation and no police record that to me also sketches black people's sort of distance from actual policing and police protection, right? That you can have someone who everyone knows is, is violent and has assaulted many people, but never having any sort of arrest record. Ultimately, for me, it sort of demonstrates the ways in which police are not in these communities protecting folks and folks don't feel that they can go to the police for protection. And that's real with good reason, right? Policing at this time is, is racist, it's predominantly white, and it's also accepted that violence is a part of policing. And they're particularly brutal with respect to African Americans who the rhetoric around black people at this time is that black people are congenitally criminal. Right, so you have a police force that's overwhelmingly white and used to using violence as a means to control people, policing a population that they believe is especially violent in these ways. You have early examples in the late 19th century of black people being detained and beaten by police because they are walking in the wrong neighborhoods, right? Because they are caught carrying things that the police don't believe they actually own. Right? In many ways, it's shockingly similar to today.